Natural compounds are incredibly important because of this constant and relentless advertisement of natural everything. Over several decades, we do believe that the word natural is synonymous to benign and beneficial. And the main premise and fundamental premise behind this, from my point of view, is not correct. What is the premise? If this is a nature and plant kingdom and animal kingdom and mankind, if the compound is synthesized in the body of the animal or in the, inside the plant, somehow inherently it's supposed to be benign to the human body. There is no scientific justification for this premise. It was just one of those beliefs that we are all part of the whole, which is not the scientifically sound concept overall. So if certain compounds are pleasant in the plant, there is a reason why this compound is in the plant. It's a result of some metabolomic uh, changes or enzymatic changes inside those plants, and each compound has its own function. It has nothing to do for human bodies. Nothing has to do with the metabolism inside the human bodies. So I was criticizing this main issue that natural compounds can be trusted. If you look at the list of compounds which is maintained by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, this is the most authoritative international body which collects data and has to be scientifically sound research on certain compounds so that they will include into IRRC, as an abbreviation, International Agency for Research on Cancer, to be included in that list. If you look in the group one or group 2A, probably carcinogenic, possibly carcinogenic, you will find many natural compounds. What is the household natural compounds but turned out to be exceptionally uh, carcinogenic? Asbestos. 20 years ago, someone from this stage would say asbestos can be carcinogenic. The scientists would have been ridiculed. How it can be carcinogenic if it's natural? If it's natural. 20 years ago, someone would say that biogenic compounds like female hormone can be carcinogenic inside the women's body. People would have been ridiculed. It's not only natural, it's coming from the female body. So these are these revolutionary discoveries which has been made during last, mostly during last 10 years that we have to look at the very concept of natural completely differently. Now, in which cases natural are good? In I will try to make it clear so that you won't be under the impression that I am anti-natural, pro-synthetic, or I am anti-synthetic and pro-natural. It's not. I am a scientist. If there is a solid scientific proof that this is black, then this is black. It doesn't matter. It is natural or synthetic, and vice versa. Let me talk a little bit about this natural recipes. You know that people believe in whatever they can find in the books, folk medicine books, which has been written two, three thousand years ago. You know, every nation has its ancient medicinal books. If you travel around the globe, most of the people are very proud of these ancient medicinal books that they have. Now, can we trust those books? Can we trust those books? The answer is no. By the end of my presentation, maybe you will just lose your uh, usual frame of references and say, oh my God, what is it exactly he has done? Now it's clear what we can believe in and what we cannot believe in. This is true. We should believe in science. And at the end of the presentation, we'll decide together what we have to do about the mess that we are currently in as a society and what the societal consequences are. Now, let me just go back to the ancient book issue. Chemical companies, close to 20, 30 years ago, decided to closely look at the recipes which are inside their ancient books. I don't want to mention any specific ancient books which are written by certain nations so that I won't hurt anybody's feelings. But whatever I will tell you, this is true for any ancient books. It was a complete disappointment because they are not based on scientific evidence. They are based on anecdotal evidence. And these are kind of predictions, right? Analogous to recent prediction by Mayan calendar that there will be an end of the world. End of the world. End of the world. Not anything happened on December 21st? No. I could see people around me, even educated people, were believing that we should be concerned what the Mayan civilization has predicted. 
I couldn't believe that people could, be, could even trust this kind of information. If Mayan civilization or this particular civilization was such a powerful civilization that could predict what would happen two or three thousand years after them or several centuries after them, I am just generalizing, then how is it that they are not around? How is it they were not able to figure out what will happen to them instead of predicting something for us? Remember in 1978, two Cambridge physicists have predicted that so-called Jupiter um, phenomenon, that in 1978, all planets will be on one side of the sun, and it might be the end of the world. One of those Mayan-type predictions, nothing happened in 1978, as you know. So why? Again, because it was not, it was not based on the scientific evidence. Nostradamus, some people believe that Nostradamus predicted 9-11. Two steel birds flying into the building has nothing to do with science. So it's kind of unjustified for us in 2013 really to believe in to this kind of things. And when companies looked at the ancient recipes, I have to say that not only it was complete disappointment, but the companies like Merck a couple of years ago decided to completely abandon that particular, uh, uh, particular project. In some cases, they were able to develop uh, drugs based on the carbon framework coming from the nature. But it took another $50, $100 million actually to come up with this kind of uh, exploratory work and to fund this research. But this is not definitely something which was, which was in, the, in that recipe. Now, those believers or those scientists who believe that natural compound is inherently benign or that particular natural formulation and extract can be used as is as a supplement. I will challenge them the way I challenged them a couple of times in, my, in the radio programs. If these formulations are so good, why is it that you are advertising for several decades you didn't isolate that compound? You have to realize that any natural extract contains 50, 100 organic compounds in it. Even if one of them can do anything positive, it's an antiseptic effect, or can inhibit this, or cancel cell proliferation, what is happening with another 20, 30 com compounds? of unknown structure, unknown metabolism, unknown stereochemistry, unknown diastereoselectivity, unknown geometric isomerism, unknown interaction with body enzymes, unknown, 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 unknown. It was good maybe 20 years ago just to take the plant, add some hot water to it, and to drink this. But in 2013, how we can consume so much unknown structures, just believing that it can do something good. So scientific approach will be, if something is known, then the compound should be isolated, compound should be tested, completely understood what is happening inside the body, and only after that, without the rest of the compounds, it can be used for certain purposes.